In this video, we will see how we can handle exceptions in our program using try and catch blocks. So let's first look at our syntax. Any code that might cause a problem or cause an exception, we'll put it in a try block. So we have the keyword try and between the two curly braces, we'll put the protected code. This is the code that might be causing an exception. And then after that try block, we'll have a catch block. So we have the catch keyword and then in parentheses, what exception we are catching. So if we are catching an arithmetic exception, if we are catching a null point pointer exception, this is the class name of the exception we are catching. And this is the name of that exception or a parameter name that will give that exception. You can give it any name you want. It doesn't have to be E1. It could be E exception, any name that you want. This is the name of the um, exception object that you want to um, use. And then inside this catch block, inside these two curly braces, what do you want to do if this exception happened? So if this exception happened, instead of terminating the program, this is what we will be doing instead. After you handle that exception, your program will continue to run as normal as you would have if an exception did not happen. So let's try it here in Eclipse. Let's say that we want to read an input from the user. So I'm going to create a scanner scan equals new scanner. And we are reading from the console. So system dot n. And we will prompt the user. So system dot out dot print line. And then we will tell them, please enter a number. And whatever number they are entering, let's use print instead of print line. Whatever number they are entering, we will divide it by um, five. So this program is just going to divide any number that we pass um, divided by five. So the number they are entering, we will store it in an integer. Let's call it input and that we will use scan dot next integer. And what we are going to do system dot out dot print line. We will divide that number by five or input by five. So this is a normal program. Let's run it and see what happens. Please enter a number. So I'm going to enter 10, for example, and you'll see we are printing out two. So a very normal program. There are no problems in there. Now let's switch. Let's say we will divide five bad by the number that we are passing. So five divided by the input. Let's see what happens. So whatever input we are passing, it will be, um, we will divide five by, by that number. So if I entered, for example, 10, since this is an integer division, five divided by 10 will be zero. Now where the problem might happen if we pass zero as our input. So if we pass zero, we are dividing five by zero and that is a division by zero problem and that will cause an arithmetic exception. So if you run this or click enter, you'll see we have arithmetic exception, which is division by zero at this location, line 14. So instead of terminating this program and displaying this unfriendly message to the user, we want to display something else, for example, to the user. So what we can do in here, before we do the operation that might cause a problem, which is this operation, five divided by input, we can surround it in a try block. So we try to do five divided by input. So try, try to divide five by the input and if nothing is, or if there is no problem, we'll just proceed. If there is a problem, we want to catch that problem. So we have a catch block here. And what is this going to catch? We are going to catch an arithmetic exception. And let's call that exception E. So if we get an arithmetic exception, if we catch an arithmetic exception, we can tell the user system.out.println, please do not enter a zero. So instead of displaying this unfriendly message, we will be displaying, please do not enter a zero if the user is entering a zero. So let's try to run it again and try to enter zero. Instead of getting that error message that we got before, we are telling the user, please do not enter a zero. And in this case, our program will not actually terminate. So if we had anything after that um, error, so system.out.println, We are here, for example, 
This message will also be printed because the program is not terminated anymore. We are continuing with our program. So please do not enter a zero and we said we are here. And that's what we are trying to do. We do not want to terminate the program if the user makes a mistake. We want to tell them that they made a mistake and we want to continue executing our program. Now, what if the user actually entered a string instead of an integer? So let's try to run this again. And instead of entering a, a number, an integer number, he entered Sam. Notice we have another type of exception called input mismatch exception. We are expecting an integer, but the user entered actually a string. So we have an input mismatch exception. So this code actually might be causing two different types of exception. One is division by zero, and which is an arithmetic exception, and one is the input mismatch exception. So how do we deal with that? What we can do is actually we can put that code that is causing that um, other exception in our try block. So in here, we have two lines of code. Each one of them could be actually causing an exception. One is causing the input mismatch exception, and one could be causing the division by zero or arithmetic exception. Now, each one of them could have its own catch block. So we can have multiple catch blocks. Each catcher is responsible for its own type of exception. So in here, I will have another catch block. And this catch block, this catcher will catch input mismatch exception. And let's also call it E. Now I could call it E in here because they um, are in different local scopes. These are in different local scopes. This is only available in here. And this E is only available um, in here. So what I'm going to do when we have the input mismatch exception, I'm going to print out system dot out dot print line. I will just say, um, please enter a number or please do not enter a non-numeric value. So if they entered a zero, we'll tell them do not enter a zero. If they entered a, another type or uh, they entered a non-numeric value, we'll tell them please enter a numeric value. Now the input mismatch exception is actually part of the java.util package, so you can import it. So import java.util input mismatch and you will not get this um, red underline anymore, which is a syntax error. So let's run it again. So if I entered zero, it will tell me, please do not enter a zero. And we printed, we continued with our program and we printed, we are here. If we run it again and we entered Sam now, you will see, it will tell me, please do not um, enter a non-numeric value. So please do not enter a non-numeric value. So again, if your code could be causing different types of exceptions, multiple types of exceptions, you'll put all the statements that might throw an exception in the try block, and then you can have as many catches as you want. Each catch is specialized for one type of exceptions. So the first catch is, for example, catching the um, input mismatch exception. The second one is catching the um, division or arithmetic um, exception. Another one is catching the null pointer exception and so on. So each one of them will be doing something specific to the exception that occurred. So if we are dividing by zero, we are telling the user do not enter a zero. If we are reading an integer and the user entered something other than an integer, we will tell them, please enter an integer or please do not enter an numeric value and so on. So each exception is caught by its own specific catcher. So each catcher will be catching the specific type of exception in here. Another block you can add to your exception handling is the final block. The final block, we usually use it to clean up after our code. So we had an error or whether we did not have an error, we want to do the same operation. This operation will be done if we put it in the um, finally block. The finally block, we usually use it to close files after reading. If an error happened or an error did not happen, we will still need to close the file. Or if we are reading from a connection like an internet source, we will still need to close the connection whether we had an error or whether we did not have an error. The finally block is optional. You do not have to put it, but if you want to put a finally block, you can only have one finally block. So we so we can have multiple catch blocks, but if you want to add a finally block, you can only have one finally block. So in your try catch finally um, exception handling, you have to have one try block. If you have a finally block, you can remove the catch blocks. You can have zero or more catch blocks. 
if you do not want to have a finally block, you have to have at least one catch block in your code. So what is our syntax? In our try block, we will have the statements that might cause an exception. After the try block, we can have uh, multiple catch blocks. Each catch block will catch a specific type of exception and it will handle that exception. And at the end, we will put our finally block where we have the final statements, which will help me clean up after my code. So if we look at our flow of control, we are executing program code. And then if an exception happened, we'll go to the exception handling. If the exception was handled or if it wasn't handled, we'll, go, we'll still go to the finally block. If the exception did not happen, we'll still go to the finally block. So you'll see we are always executing the finally block, whether an exception happened or not, whether the exception that happened was handled or not, we will still go to the finally unblock. So let's look at this program. We have this um, program. We have a try block with some statements. We have a catch that will catch the exception and we are handling that exception in here. We have a finally block and then we have an X statement after this try catch finally block. So suppose that we did not have any exceptions happening in here. That means we do not execute the catch block because nothing wrong happened. We did not throw an exception, but we will still execute the final statement in the finally block. So the finally block will still be executed even if we did not have an exception. And then we'll continue with our next statement. Now let's say we have these three statements and then statement two through an exception of type exception one. So statement two through an exception of type exception one. So what will that mean? We will need to handle that exception. We will need to catch it. It will be caught in here and we'll be handling the exception in this code. And then we will still need to go to the finally block and execute the final statements in here. And then later we'll go to the next statement. Now, if we have a statement two that throw an exception of type two, the first catch block will not be executed because it's only catching exception of type one. So exception of type one will not be caught because we do not have an exception. Exception two is caught in this second catch. We'll be handling that exception. And then we are going to the final statement or final block to execute the final statements. And then we'll go to the next statement. Notice if an exception happened at statement two, statement three is not executed anymore because instead of terminating, we actually threw an exception and we moved to the block that code that exception. So statement three and this part of the code are not executed. They are not executed because statement two caused me to jump to this block and then we went to the final block and then to the next statement. So far, all the exceptions that we have seen are called unchecked exceptions. Unchecked exceptions mean that the compiler does not check if you handled that exception at compilation time. So at compilation time, if you did not handle that exception, your compiler will still compile your program and will allow you to run it. The other type of exception we have is called checked exception. Checked exceptions are checked at compile time. If your code might be throwing a checked exception, you have to handle that exception. If you are not handling that exception in your code, your compiler will not allow you to compile that code. And we'll see how um, this happens when we try to read and write to files. So again, unchecked exceptions are not checked by the compiler. So even if you are not handling these exceptions that might happen in your code um, using a try catch block, your compiler will allow you to compile and run that program. So for example, if you, um, if you are trying to access an array element outside your array, so you are using an index that's not part of your array, that might be throwing an index out of bounds exception but Java will not force you to use a try catch block to handle that um, problem. So these are logic errors that should be corrected in your program, but to avoid um, a lot of try catch blocks in your program, Java does not force you to write um, the code to catch unchecked exceptions. So for the index out of bound exceptions, you can actually handle them in another way that does not cause you to throw an exception. So before you read an array element, you can check using an F statement if this element or if this index is less than the length or not. If it's not less than the length, that means it's not part of your array and you cannot actually read it. So instead of using try catch, because try catches will have a lot of, you will need to add a lot of code in your program and you will be uh, making your code 
inefficient. That's why Java does not force you to use try catch with these unchecked exceptions. So all the runtime exceptions that we have seen and the system errors are considered as unchecked exceptions. So you do not need to handle them using a try catch block in your code. All the other exceptions are known as checked exceptions, meaning that the compiler forces you to check and deal with these exceptions in your program. So again, runtime exceptions like arithmetic exceptions, null pointer exceptions, um, index out of bound exception, illegal argument exceptions are considered as unchecked exceptions. So you do not have to check them or deal with them in your program. So the Java compiler does not force you to check for them in your program. Why? You can handle them or you can deal with them with a different type of logic. So again, before you divide by a number, you can check if this number is zero. If it's zero, you just skip the division. If you are accessing uh, an object, you can check the reference. Is it pointing to a null or not? If it's pointing to a null, you will not access that object and so on. Now for the checked exceptions, as we will see when we read and write to files, there's no way to handle them other than a try catch block or exception handling techniques.